All right, so today we're gonna be going over the electrical stuff that has to be done to make the transmission work because it is computer controlled. It's the 4L60E, I believe. So basically the first place you gotta make is right here. You need to connect a tack signal, which this is the tachometer test lead. So this is our tack signal. And there is a purple wire back here. They used to go into the old distributor, as you guys can see, that purple wire. You need to connect these two, so that way this will send an RPM signal to the PCM. And then what we need to do, we need a throttle position sensor signal. Now with an Edelbrock carburetor, you can't use the stock GM throttle position sensor, which this is where this US shift throttle position sensor kit, basically it bolts onto your Edelbrock carburetor. It hooks up on the part of the throttle. Then it pulls this down, giving you a throttle position sensor signal. And this is the wiring. As you can see, they give you a lot of extra wiring. I only need probably a foot or so. But this plugs in. You splice these three wires into the respective wire on the truck. So first things first, we need to figure out which wire does what. So the black one here is the ground, the green is the sensor signal, and the orange is the five volt power supply. Now we gotta find out which wire does what on the truck. We come here, you can see here's our throttle position sensor and the black wire leads to this, which goes all the way up here to a ground. Then the gray wire comes right here and the gray wire is that five volt sensor reference and the dark blue and that is the throttle position sensor in. So that means this orange wire goes to the gray, the black wire goes to black, and green goes to dark blue. So the first call of action is going to be cutting the right amount of wire length. So my plan is just kind of line it up, and I think I'm going to cut probably right here. So you always want to have a little extra, but not too much. Then we can get rid of all this extra wire here. And now we can come here, do the same thing to our throttle position wires. Cut them about here. That looks good. Then we can begin to splice. So the first thing we have to do, splice off the jacket. Then we're going to have to do the same thing with this wire here. This is a little bit bigger. This is 18. And now with that all cut, we can grab our heat shrink butt connectors. We grab the red ones because this covers 16 gauge to 22 gauge wire, which is the exact range we're dealing with. We have 20 to 22 to 18. So we grab one. Make sure you get all the wires, slip it on, grab our crimpers over here, and squeeze. Give us some tugs, make sure all these are tight, and they are. Then we bring in our throttle position sensor, place the wires where they need to be, orange to gray, black to black, green to dark blue. All right, with all them spliced, we can grab a lighter or something and shrink down this heat shrink tubing. And just like that, our throttle position sensor pigtail spliced in, ready for the carburetor. So before we can install the carburetor, we need to remove these two screws here so we can install our throttle position sensor kit. All right, with both of those out, we grab our sensor and we set it in place here and start it back in by hand. And same thing with this other one, we grab this one, start it in by hand. So an update with the carburetor swap. What we have going on here, we have to come in here and drill two more holes in the back because the carburetor I show is an Edelbrock 600 Performer. It's a four barrel carburetor. And how it works is the two in the front are open when you're just casually driving, whatever. But as you get to higher RPMs, there's two in the back that will then open. And my problem is uh, these holes here, obviously, they're not big enough for a four barrel. We're gonna take a one and a half inch hole saw and drill out these here, so that hopefully it should fit and it should open and work how it's supposed to. All right, and here we are, let's put on the carburetor. So we first let's put on this little quarter inch plug. This is for the brake booster on the back. As you guys can see, mine is routed to the back of the intake manifold, so I don't need this. So we're gonna thread tape it off. So let's get right to bolting the carburetor down. Grab ourselves the carburetor gasket, set this in place like so. Grab ourselves the carburetor. Set this in place as well. Make sure that it's all lined up. And it does appear to be. Now we can grab our 5 16 bolt and start it down by hand. Now the specs Edelbrock gave are very vague. It just says snug. But they did say make sure you use washers like this. That way it doesn't damage up the carburetor and that way it kind of evenly disperses the torque of the bolt. Bolt up the opposite corner of the carburetor because you want to start on opposite sides. All right, and the carburetor is now bolted down. All these are pretty snug. The carburetor's tight. Uh, the throttle opens and closes everything as it should. I found out I actually can't use this old bracket. 
Then after that, I gotta take this tape off and run some fuel lines. I'm gonna go behind here, because right here is the fuel port. I got this vacuum line to connect up. This line goes back to the distributor to the advance. I have to plug in the throttle position sensor. Then once the throttle cable, all the vacuum stuff, the throttle position sensor and the fuel lines are hooked up, I should be able to put the air box on and uh, should be ready to go. We also have to hook up the choke, but it is coming along. We are making progress, finally. We can remove the tape from our fitting. That was to stop any bugs or critters are going up in there. And then we come in the cab, and then we come right here. We grab our 3 8 fuel line. I'm thinking I'm going to run this fuel line from down here underneath all this. That's the plan. I think I'm gonna put my fuel filter about here, which is this little doohickey. I think I'm gonna cut my fuel line right about here make sure you know it does say two carb and the carb is gonna be this way so you want the arrow pointing this way to the carburetor we slide the included hose clamp on the fuel line then we slide our fuel line over the end so then with a six millimeter socket we can come on here tighten up the hose clamp So same as the other side, slide your hose clamp on. I'm thinking of cutting it probably, you want to overestimate for this, you can always take more off, but it's going to be a pain in the butt to add. I have plenty of extra, but well, we want to get it pretty good the first time. So I'm thinking maybe there, I'm going to cut your fuel lines, just putting it on just like so. So let me go grab a hose clamp. All right guys, this is the time we've been waiting for. We're not starting it, but we are going to see fuel leaks, if there's any. So there's no visible fuel leaks. I'm gonna just quickly double check, triple check. Do you not want any gasoline leaking out anywhere? So we got the throttle cable bracket mounted. Everything looks to be fine. All right, so with everything ran, Somewhat. Now we can hook up the spark plug wires here, starting with number one. Good. Now all our spark plug wires are hooked up. We can begin zip tying them so they don't rub on the exhaust. And now with everything hooked up, should be able to try it. Yeah. Is there any leaks? I'm just priming the fuel pump again. You got pressure, it's definitely... Try it. Yep. Attempt number two. She's running, holy shit. She's running. Good lord. So now with the carburetor installed, we can actually go in there and adjust the ignition timing. And you have to come back here. There's a bolt under there. You're going to have to loosen this so that way you can turn your distributor. And you also have to take this vacuum line off and plug it. Alright, so I actually didn't have to adjust my timing. It was actually somehow spot on to where I had it before, even if even after I put in the new distributor and everything. So all that's left to do, unplug this vacuum line. I just use this screw here, then plug it back into the distributor. So as you guys can see, the choke cable is right here. I'm in the process of running it through. Comes in the cab, as you can see. We will feed as much as we can through the <laughs> hole that I drilled. So I'm thinking this will probably go right about here actually so now if we come out here you can see we have our choke cable okay so we're making sure that that is in run position no choke we tighten that down that's full choke for the final step of the carburetor swap it's time to install the air box so first we use the included air box stud which just threads in to the carburetor here just like that we grab our little paper gasket set that in there like that grab our air box Put our filter on. We grab ourselves the little wing nut. Just like that, the carburetor swap is ready to start running. 